on the court, the, you could clearly see he's focused. He on the grind, right? But you can clearly see that off the court, there's something. There's something there. Something is going on. No clearance. Man, here we are, Jay. Back at it again. You and I. No <laughs> Nigga talk. <laughs> <laughs> nigga talk <laughs> Hey we started the last four episodes By just screaming nigga <laughs> Hey we did like it the all day. We did it all during Black History Month too I think Hey is that okay Well here's the thing bro It's the first episode of Women's History Month And KC is not here Oh shit that's disrespectful <laughs> She is on vacation for Women's yeah. History Month That's what's happening She's kicking some ass That's what she's doing right yeah. now She's kicking some ass right now She beats Shout out kids. to Khadija in kickball. Uh she I out there with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> uh what's up? What's happening? What's cracking everybody? It is what's Tyler up, what's up, what's from up? the No Clarence Podcast here and I'm chilling. And I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, the light skinned assassin, the producer of the pod himself, Mr. Wes J. J Ho <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I wanted to see how many more nicknames you can think of. <laughs> how you been, bro? Oh, that was loud. Uh, ooh, I've been I've been good, you know, just chilling, you know. Uh I'm happy to be back. I've been busy, man. I was, I had a crazy work week last week. I don't want to talk about it. But you know, yeah, I'm we back. missed you last week, bro. We missed you. Yeah. For real, for real. But it was cool. Shout a- out to uh shout out to my wife for being on the episode last week. Hey, it was hilarious. I I listened to it, I, I, and it was just y'all were having me crack up. You was all on all on your lonesome tea. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good though, you know. That that's oh, my man. life though. That's my life for real, for real. I, I guess so, man. You know, it's tough. It's tough being the only man sometimes. Yeah. You ever yeah. you ever become the only man by accident? Like, yep. you didn't even know that this was going to be an all-woman's thing, and then you show up, and you're like, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> ah. so here, here I am, just chilling, uh, right? Damn. No, right. Now I got, now you like you have that, you feel like, uh, gotta keep an eye on them. They're like fucking. <laughs> 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 uh, I got to do all the stepping you, up. <laughs> I'll never forget one time, and I'm sure they listen to this, some of them. But one time, like, it was just me as a man, like, the only man in the jump. Then they put on some music, and everybody just started twerking. And I'm just looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you ain't going to catch it to me slipping. Uh, you know what I do? I focus. Me. Right. I focus on my woman. Just I'm like, yeah, in. baby. Fuck it up, yeah. baby. Girl, that, baby. Fuck it up. I see you, girl. I see you. <laughs> I see you, girl. I just you, only you, <laughs> only keeping my eyes on you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I be, though, oh, bro. Man. Oh, it's the man. life we chose. You feel yeah. me? <laughs> hey, hey, hey! It is what it is, bro. It's hey, hard speaking, sometimes. <laughs> oh, real quick, I ain't gonna get too deep into it, but I went to WWE SmackDown last weekend, bro. Oh, where you know I always wanted to do that when I was a kid. Yo. Ray Mysterio is still doing it, bro. You know what? You know what? He ain't even the oldest nigga out there. But here's the storyline, though. He got a kid who wrestles. His kid don't like him. Yeah, so, I see Ray that. Mysterio walks out, and his kid punches him in the gut, <laughs> and he just falls down. <laughs> you know what? Good for good for him because you know that's dope to be able to fight your dad and it is cool. Stuff. Rick Flair's remember, daughter, wrestling. yeah, Rick Flair's daughter. She looked like a racist. All we was doing after the fight because she was the main event. So after her, it was over. Everybody walking out was just like, woo, <laughs> 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 like for good ten minutes, woo, like it was it was something crazy. Bro. I like to say that I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm not a spectator, but I watch <clears> from <throat> a distance, like through Instagram. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like I don't like it. I keep right. up with it, but I don't sit down and watch it. Right. Like You're I know loyal. who. Yeah, I'm not I'm yeah, not yeah. I'm not twelve. Exactly. You can't sit there and watch it every week. Like as a, if you gotta be a real fan to do that. Exactly. I just like exactly. peeking, you know. I like seeing like some of my wrestlers kids are wrestling now. Mm. Like mm. Makichi's son. 
Rikishi's Ooh. sons, I mean. Wow, Both his sons crazy. are wrestling. They're twins. One's married to a black woman. Shout out to that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to start a remote podcast? Well, we have the perfect website for you. Riverside.fm, where you can record remote podcasts and video interviews and studio quality from anywhere. Used by over 70 plus thousand creators and Fortune 500 firms. Riverside allows you to upload your video and audio while recording on your web browser itself. That means you don't have to download any apps onto your computer. Riverside also allows you to edit your video and audio on the platform and cut up clips from your recording for social media. So if you're thinking of starting a, a podcast, it's as easy as clicking the link in the description. Thank you. Now let's get back to the show. Speaking of getting in the rink, man, uh, Creed 3. Creed 3 yes. dropped last weekend, bro. I know we gave our opinions or expectations of it last yeah. week. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let you like talk your say, talk, man. What I, you think of the movie? First off, you was you hit the nail <laughs> on the head. <laughs> <laughs> last yes. week you hit the nail on the head i literally was like i know what i'm getting from a creed movie yeah and i got it's, everything it's literally rocky you know but rocky it's you could do so many things um right first off let's give it a shout out because it broke the record for the biggest opening for a sports film ever that's major the, sports films don't be getting that much yeah love, they don't be real. getting love like that you know they get love but they don't be getting like people ain't going to the theaters to see it right right Right, so good shout out MBJ for that. And this had the biggest opening in the Rocky franchise as well. That's dope. That's yeah, dope. it made in the opening week, I think it made fifty one million. That was as of Saturday. I think by Sunday it was at fifty three, fifty four. Hey, before we get deeper into this, let me ask you a question now. Now the Rocky series, the Rocky Creed series now has what? Uh nine movies? Nine, yeah. right? Nine movies, yeah. Okay. Out of the nine, let's do a top three. Okay. Who is your top three? Uh, ooh. Creed one, two, and three. <laughs> 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 nah, nah, nah. It gotta be it gotta be Creed One, <clears throat> Rocky Four. Cause that's the most infamous one. Uh-huh. And then Creed three. This movie was amazing. This I am going with. Amazing. I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna go with Rocky two, Rocky okay. four, and and Creed three. Okay. R- Rocky two is is that jump was crazy when they both punch each other out at the same time and it was a race to get up. That was yeah. nuts. Yeah. Rocky four. Oh shit! You do remember that? And they had um Eye of the Tiger. As the last That's the song. one with Eye of the Tiger? Yeah. Was Rocky, and then was Rocky 2 or th- Rocky or 2 was Eye of the Tiger. Okay. And then Rocky 4 was Hearts on Fire. That song, boy, I was playing out in the car the other day. <laughs> I was playing out in the car the other day, bro. You couldn't tell me I wasn't a white man for a good five minutes. <laughs> That's my oh, song shit. right there. But no, nah, Creed 3 was awesome. Yeah, it was. I fucking love this movie. Like every minute of it. Yeah, it was. My only gripe is like, I, I'll say my gripes for the end because it okay. wasn't even that big of a deal. It wasn't terrible. Yeah, um, um, I love the storyline, bro. I love the story. My, I literally the storyline was it was truly inspired by anime. Like, well, it's, this, it's interesting because we look at it <clears throat> in the beginning. Spoilers, spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler we'll alert. We're gonna spoil there. the movie. Um, in the beginning of the movie. When I see uh, Adonis beating up old dude, and I'm yeah. like, "What the heck is wrong with this little nigga?" You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, why is he? Because you know, you see the trailer, you see they all get in trouble and stuff. I'm like, why? Why would he even spaz on somebody? Like yeah. That? You feel me? And so to start the movie with that, and then to see the progression of the storyline and how yeah. it, you know it all leads to the fight. I thought it was I thought it was very well done. Shout out to Ryan Coogler once again writing the um for for writing the movie. And you know, the, I it, it wasn't was well just done. him though, it was Michael B as well. Oh, okay. Michael B okay. and Ryan Coogler and Ryan Coogler's brother also wrote on this one. It was all yeah. three of them combined writing it. Uh, oh oh <laughs> Sylvester Stallone still got an executive producing credit. So shout yeah, out to but, him for getting on that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason that there, there's some drama behind the scenes on why he wasn't in this movie. Really? Yeah. And what has nothing to do with Michael B though. It has to do with the, the dude who owns the rights to the Rocky franchise. 
They have bad blood. Real bad. They don't fuck with each other. Who, like Sylvester got, Stallone? And Sylvester the one that owns Stallone it? and the and the dude that owns the rights to the Rocky franchise, they don't fuck with each other. I forgot wow. his name, but I just looked it up too. It escapes me. But they don't get along. So like when I seen an interview when um, Sylvester Stallone was being interviewed and he was asked, like, why weren't you in Creed 3? He's like, I'm not going to see it. Uh, but I would love to do Creed 4 as long as, that, as long as the other guy ain't in it ain't involved. Mm, mm. Yeah, so, ain't even bring him up. I don't even. Think yeah, that's why Rocky I think. Up. I think that's why they didn't even bring him up because of that dude. Well, at least Sylvester Stallone ain't hating on um, Michael yeah. B. Though that's oh, all he that said. Really he loved Michael B. Yeah, he said he's it's not like, going to see money. this movie. <laughs> yeah, it just it's just like get your money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he said he ain't uh, gonna watch it, but he said he supported him 100. percent There's nothing between them two. But I love yeah. this movie. I thought Jonathan Majors, he really elevated Michael B. Jordan's performance. Big time. I feel like, Big time. I feel like it really rubbed off on him. And I really, and like, it's hard to do something, to, to elevate your acting ability while at the same time directing. Yes. Like, this is yes. also his directorial debut. And he fucking killed it. He has some beautiful shots in the movie, like the one right in there in the locker room, right when um he wished, he wished uh, Jonathan Majors luck. And then yes. he walk, was walking out and it froze. And you could just see, like, how you could tell that Michael B. Jordan is holding on to something just from just looking at the picture, just from yeah. that shot. And that, uh, what's his face? Jonathan Majors is all, his his side's all lit up. It's open. It's like, he's not, he don't got nothing to hide. Oh, his side was light. Yeah, lit yeah. up. Michael B.'s was dark. Yeah. Wow, yeah that was yeah. good. Good. That was a good one, Jay. That was a good one. Yeah, it was a beautiful shot. And I, when I seen that, I was like, oh, Michael B's in his bag. It was, I didn't even, it wasn't even the fight scenes that made me think he was in his mm. bag. It was the mm. shots like that. But I loved, I loved the fight scene. The first fight scene when um, he was getting his ass whooped a little bit. And oh, he, he, uh, Michael like, B's I, last, it was his last yeah, fight. It's supposed to be yeah. his last fight. I thought that was dope. <laughs> it was, that's direct. That's inspired by anime too, because there's always the bad motherfucker in anime always gets a slow motion fight when they whoop somebody's ass real quick. Well, he yeah. said the first fight was supposed to show the true art of boxing. Yeah. Well, so, it 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 was that too. Yeah. No, it was. It was. I really was. loved how he. Uh, and I like how he kind of. Well, for this, I don't know. For some reason, this feels like I don't. Well, of course, it ain't gonna be the last one, but it felt like a like a. Something there's a that finality closed. to it. Yeah, there's a finality yeah. to it. And so it was good to see Ricky Con is it Conway. Conway. Uh, it was good to see him defeat Ricky Conway, the uh, you know, the dude he yeah. lost to in the first creep. So I thought yeah. that was cool. That was dope. That was dope to see. Cause I forgot that he lost in the first one. Yeah. I always forget that Rocky lost in the first one too. Like I that's something you always forget. I don't know why. Well, but I'll never forget. It was dope to see that. I like <laughs> to see that he was cool with Drago. Yes. How they were training together. Um, yes. Was, but yeah, I think MBJ hit the ball at the park. Yep. With this one, because he, like, I want, I'm interested to see what he has to direct next, because he really, like, even like the tension, you could feel the tension. Every time Jonathan Majors was on, was on screen before that fight he had with exactly. the Spanish dude, you just exactly. felt the tension, like, between them. Yeah, like, like, the cuz I'm waiting on I'm waiting on Jonathan Majors or Diamond Dame. I'm waiting on Dame to like air him out to his wife yeah. on like what happened between them two, you know exactly. what I'm saying? But he just kept leaving us with that like the elephant in the room situation. Every time he spoke it sounded like he had so, there was another meaning to it. Yeah, exactly. And like you can exactly. every time Michael B was on screen before that fight before Dame's first fight, you could just feel the guilt. Yep. Like I just loved how you they was able to make you feel these things without telling you these things. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a prime example of show don't tell. This is how mm. you make a good movie. Like mm. a bad movie, a lot of times bad movies are defined as like they over explain everything to you. You don't have to explain some things to people. You could just if you film it in a way to make you feel it without no words being said. Or yeah, understand yeah, what's going awesome. on without words being said. Those are the movies that people say, "Oh, those, that's a really good movie." A couple of things that was interesting to me. Yes. After Diamond Dame won and got the heavyweight championship, they was out on the beach. Where all them niggas come from? That's 
Where he get all them friends? No, but here's my <laughs> here's my problem. Here's my problem. Now, now I don't know how long it was between him getting out of jail, okay, and him he saying said like he just, two weeks, a couple weeks. It was no, but I'm saying, but from the fight, him getting out of jail, oh, to and the fight. him and him after the fight, because I know he was saying he's just trying to, you know, not uh, what's it called? Uh, he's trying to, you know, stay under probation, whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. The nigga. Who has the nigga the gun? <laughs> like, <laughs> why would you hand him the gun? He just got out of jail. He did just get out of jail. And he just tucked it in. He just yeah. got the judge and just tuck, he got the gun. Just tucked that joint in. I was like, oh, "What shit. is going on?" That's when all the tension snaps, though. Yes, right in that part is when like it was like an explosion. Like the tension's finally gone. And I almost forgot. I almost but forgot that. Um, I almost forgot that. Uh. I had to remember that Michael B was a retired boxer at that moment because he knocked that boy out, and I was like, yeah. "You can go to jail for that, can't you?" But I was like, "Oh yeah, he's not." No, a, he's no, not a no. That's no a myth. That's a myth. It is. Yeah, that's Explain. a myth. So if the he, there's those no, there's no such thing, no law as your hands are lethal weapons. Okay, it's not okay. a law. That's a myth. Oh, that's <laughs> so a myth. Buster he wouldn't right go now. to jail. Yeah. He'll just get. He'll just probably get judged more harshly. But that's not a law. It took everything for him. He that man got punched. He walked away, Yo, he and then Cuz called him nigga. Baby Creed, and he, he came, came back. back. He did. Hey, he showed growth. Major, major <laughs> growth. Because in the first movie, he was knocking folk he, out for just being he, called Baby Creed. Yeah, he swung. Did no, not even a moment to think. He just full swing, snap, <laughs> like knocking niggas out left and right. I ain't gonna lie. The scene after that, I had a, I had a quick problem with. With Tessa Thompson. Well, I forget her character's name. What's wrong? What uh, happened with Tessa Con- Thompson? Look, the man had a black guy. He was sitting there drinking his drink. You yeah. gonna ask this nigga to open up now? Oh yeah, <laughs> bad timing, bad timing. And, and he was like, "Look, like I, I just, just need like, a bro. I just I'll got tell you in a minute, <laughs> right? I can talk to you later. Like, just let me sit down." And then she just keep like. Just, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that because she had good intentions. It, but she just it, keep trying to make this man open up. And it was like, he, and then he finally, you know, he's passing his daughter right there. And I'm just like, is you know she, what? Did she blame him? Uh-huh. I'm this like, is horrible. This is horrible. This is horrible. <laughs> this is horrible. Uh, but I must say, it's horrible. Thank God she was deaf. Because if she heard that yelling, that would have scared her so much. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but she still looked she's dirt, probably, she still looked concerned, but she wasn't. She never like, seen her father like be upset like that to his mom. Ah! Right, like he was ah! <laughs> like he was, was upset. <laughs> 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 this man was so mad, and then but I'm sitting there like, yo, she really, she really sitting here getting upset at him for not saying that after yeah. the nigga. I'm, I'm just like, look, I like just believe this nigga. I need a second. <laughs> like, can we please just talk about this later? But you well, see you know me what? with a black eye yeah. holding a drink in my hand. What makes you think hey. I am in a mental state to discuss <laughs> my issues? Hey, we still got to be better at communicating, though. Because that nigga should have been like, Jay, I, I, there's no Monday more than quarterbacking. But, like, this is how you learn a lesson. If he was like, Took a breath and was like, I really need to talk about this another time. I just need to enjoy my drink. <laughs> but he's, yo, he literally was like, I, he literally was like, I don't want to talk about this right now. <laughs> hey, hey, I've learned, I've learned, I've learned that that's not enough. That's not enough for women. Bro, what is enough, bro? explain. You got to say, hey, I know this is concerning, but I don't want to talk about this moment. We will talk about this at another time. I mean, Maybe I am emotionally not in a position to be able to explain <laughs> anything to you at this moment. Exactly. Something like that. But at the same time, <laughs> hey, hey, you see a man with a black guy drinking a drink. Maybe you don't approach him. Maybe <laughs> maybe you give him a minute. Maybe you give Rub him a minute. Rub my maybe, head. Rub my head. You know maybe what I'm saying? Come up, like, maybe go up to him and be like, hey, you okay? What happened? If you say you don't want to talk about maybe give him that breathe. Breathe. Give him give, a breath. Bruh, give him a Come back a in hug. a few hours. You know what I'm saying? Just hug me. Say, I'll yeah. be back. Come back in a few hours. I was, he just I was got punched like in the face bruh. by his best friend. 
<laughs> found out that his mom <laughs> found out his what? mom did it right. Been hiding the letters. Hiding the letters. And then hiding the nigga the that ruined his the biggest event he's had outside of his boxing uh. career. The biggest event he's had outside of his boxing career. His own boy got one of his jail homies to just <laughs> just mess it that, up. Yeah, that was before the fight, too. That was before the fight. It was a lot of things building up. Hey, and the scene with Stephen A. Smith, shout out to Stephen A. Smith for being who he is. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith did incredible. He be on the young and the restless. <laughs> first of all, first of all, I ain't never in my life, I've never in my life seen on first take a nigga call in. Yeah, call on the phone. No, that no, yo, never. you you seen that. They have they've had that before. They've had that before. I've seen it before. I don't remember yeah. when, but I know I've seen it before. But that was a great scene. That, that was, was a great scene. Because they said, I, I not at no nighttime. Not at nighttime. Right. Ain't nobody hey. calling it at nighttime. First of all, Stephen A. Smith is not on at nighttime. Like, yeah. that was great. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Not for no but, boxing. <laughs> right. But he said, oh, it's on? It's on. It's and on? as soon as they said it's on, took the air piece on, walked away. I'm yeah. like, oh. Oh. We got I was a like, mess today. Oh. <laughs> We got something. Oh. I was that montage, the train montage. J Cole came on. Yep. What you think of the J Cole song? Well, I I still got to listen to the whole uh, studio to the whole uh, album, but I like that joint. Yeah, I, I thought like it was joint. good for the montage. You know, I really like that. I song think, the, yo, no, seriously, because it was very, nigga, it was personal, like, personalized type. Yeah, situation. it had this nigga Michael B looking like Baron Davis. <laughs> <laughs> He looked like he was older. I like how they really made him look like he was old. Right. Yeah, yeah, because he grew out the mustache. The yeah, mustache he grew out the beard. Thicker. The beard was... The, the yeah. Beard, well, the mustache yeah. was super thick. The beard was... He, hey, he wasn't training like he used to, right? He, he had the t-shirt on the whole yeah, time. Yeah, he had a shirt on the whole time. <laughs> you know you old when you traded in long sleeves and hey, his baggy the, t-shirt. Hey, the beginning, right? And so to go back to the beginning... It, Ain't it funny how Jonathan Majors didn't take off his shirt until that fight? He didn't take off his shirt until the Just first Just for the fight, woman yeah. to be like, ooh. Trying to build that anticipation. <laughs> Trying to build that Yo, anticipation. But what's it called? I don't know. Somebody. He came out like Tyson. <laughs> you think he was on steroids? No. Nah. That's what I have thought. You, he, have he you really heard his, just... have you, have you seen I know he's working on that other movie. Um, he's working on a movie where he's playing a bodybuilder. It's called like Magazine Beauty. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Magazine yeah, Dreams. Yeah. One of the magazine two. dreams. It's magazine something. Yeah, it's magazine something. But yeah, but yeah, he was eating like four or five meals a day, working out six hundred and ten calories. Yes, no, six thousand six sixty one hundred. Six, yes, one hundred calories. Yeah. Sixty one hundred calories crazy. a day, and he was lifting three times a day. Yeah, oof, yeah. oof. For all the time in the world, man, all the time in the world, being an actor must be nice. Um, they give you that time yeah. to work out multiple times of the day so you could be ready for a role like that. But he's yeah. killing it, right? Michael, yo, oh, Jonathan no. Majors is. <clears throat> I still got to see Ant Man, but no, he's doing his thing. becoming like Denzel Caliber, I feel like. Mm. I feel like not even off like the movies he's done so far, just based off his acting ability. Yeah. This no, nigga knows how job. to make you feel. Like knows how to get bring emotion out of people by his acting. Without, without, and he don't say too many words. No, not too He's many words. Really at all. good with the facial expressions. Yes, real really good, good at it. Like even you know? when he was in, uh, when he was Kang, he was so like intimidating and threatening. You felt like there was something going on. Bro, like, he does this just, really good thing. He got this really good move where he can like his face be still, and then yeah. he just do that little 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 chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Do the do that smile and just, just Yeah, that smile. Yeah, that smile. That shit creepy as fuck. Yep. <laughs> and he was like, I felt like he was really channeling Mike Tyson. Mm. mm he was like moving like I feel like he was moving like Mike. Like even when he yeah. came out the for the fights, he had the fucking <clears throat> hoodie yep. cut oh, like a poncho. Very true. Very and then true. when he walked out for the final fight with, with Creed. He came out with no shirt on, just and bare. that kind of makes sense just because of the the, the era where he was like, yeah, supposed he was to be coming like up the, that dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. And his boxing style was kind of old school too. Yeah, he was doing uh, the Philly shell, like, even with like covering up. Yeah, he was doing the nature. shell and shit. I was like, yeah, oh. man, yeah. 
But it was a um, heck of a. It was a good. I love the the boxing match at the end was really dope. Yeah, the fight. The final what you fight. Think was, of the, what did you think of the uh, the boxing sequence when they uh, when everybody oh, when in, the, in the stadium every, disappeared and it was just him oh. and, and it was just them oh. two. Oh. That shit. All right, that shit was directly inspired by Naruto. Right. And Naruto and Sasuke's final fight. Really? Where everything just got quiet. Like, there was barely any music. All you hear is the punches. Mm. Like, the music's real low. Everything's quiet. All you're hearing is the breathing, the punches. Like, and you could just feel the emotions between the two of them. Like, they're no more talking. The only way they know how to communicate is with their fist. Right. And like the whole world, the only thing they was focused on was each other. And it was just like, it was beautiful and entertaining. It was like, literally directly, and that was directly inspired by Naruto. They say like, it's directly inspired from Naruto and Sasuke's fight, but they're also saying that it's like another fight from Naruto that's just as pivotal and just as emotional was uh, the fight between Kakashi and Obito. And it's the, it's the clash of the brothers. So like oh okay the clash is Sasuke and Naruto they're not blood brothers but they they grew they grew up came up together as ninja together they're brothers and then they're trying they have they're going different ways and they're trying to bring each other back Naruto's trying to bring Sasuke back Sasuke's trying to be like nah fuck you like leave me alone and it's like the pull between the brothers. Same with Kakashi and Obito. They were brothers. Obito gave up his life for Kakashi, but he ended up surviving somehow. And they got in a final fight. It was a whole thing. It was they went into a whole nother dimension, just like in Creed. And it just was like just them fighting and everything was quiet. The music was low. It was I love shit like that. Not even in just in anime. Like if they did more fights like that in movies, it was just, it's just like Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It was very intense. Oh, yeah. that was bro. I gotta tell you about. When I was at the theater. Um, the scene when Dame knocked out Felix. <clears throat> yeah, he fucked that nigga up. When he knocked him out, this lady in the back just goes, "Oh Lord!" <laughs> <laughs> she was just like, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> hey, that shit. No, that shit looked painful. Yeah, that shit yeah. looked so painful. He, pu- he, like, he punched him in the shoulder first. Yeah, he kept like, punching. Is that illegal? Crazy. Is that I illegal? Think so. I have no idea. I don't I have think no so. idea either. I feel like everything's like. I got to get a boxer on technically right in the athletic. shoulder. Huh? <laughs> I got to get a boxer on technically athletic. Yeah, so I, I, I was like, I was like, <laughs> is that against the rules? <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. It was to just punch him in the arm. I was like. Yeah, he was punching him in the arm. I was like, is that against the rules? I don't I know. I feel like people, you, I feel like. If you throw in punches, you're gonna get hit in the arm once or twice. Yeah, you're gonna get hit in the shoulder, I guess, right? Yeah, right. I don't know. But I don't know. But <laughs> like the weird. knee to the when he hit him with the knee, I was like, oh, that was dirty, but like and, and Dave just had to look like I don't I don't care what y'all niggas think. Like, yeah, I'm gonna fuck this nigga <laughs> up and I'm gonna get this fucking belt. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a motherfucker. <laughs> he whooped that boy's ass. But yeah, this that but that final fight was had so many things from that directly pulled from anime. That double punch when they both oh, punch yeah, each yeah. other. Yeah. That's directly from Naruto and Sasuke's fight as well, but also directly from DBZ when Vegeta and Goku mm. both had that double punch. And then that gut punch with, from the trailer when Yeah. When Dame got uh Creed right in the belly and the sweat popped out. It's still that's, from, bad. that's from yeah. Dragon Ball Z as well. It looked bad in the theaters too. I oh bad. yeah, that's ooh, I was like, oof. I was like, I fell to the ground a little bit. I was like, ooh. <laughs> that shit looked like it think, hurt. Okay. It's because me and uh, me and Drew have been talking about this. Yeah. If they do a Creed 4, it's the daughter of the boxer. Ooh. And it's the trainer. We, we have to wait another. I don't know how old the little girl is, but I feel like we have to wait like 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that would be interesting. That would be interesting. But I kind of just, I, I kind of want to see Michael B fight again. I don't think. <laughs> I kind of want to well, see him fight again. Okay. In, in the, they in had the Rocky six motherfucking series, Rockies. Yeah, they had six Rockies where two of them, one, he did a street fight with a dude that he was supposed to train. And then another yeah. one, he came out of retirement to fight Tarver. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, it's possible. They got four Rockies. And after the second one, he retired. 
No, he retired after the third one. After the third one, one I mean, kept, sorry. He kept coming out of retirement. Yeah. <laughs> after the third one, yeah. Well, the fifth one was when he beat that dude in the, up in the street. That's what I'm saying. The, the one, fifth yeah. one was a brawl. The sixth one was Balboa. I think they called it Balboa or Rocky. Yeah. I forget what Yeah, it was just called Balboa. Yeah. Rocky Balboa. That's what it was called. And then, uh, yeah, the fourth one was Drago, man. Yeah. So, and then Creed, yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, they we'll might see. have to go I mean, with he the can always, next. Yeah, he can always just come out of retirement, either that or. Again. Uh, you know, he just start. You know, he meets. I don't know who. I I don't know that. Yeah, I, this honestly, this might be the end. I can until see they do the end. daughter. They could do the daughter, but they'd have to wait like ten years. They have to make sure to get a real good. But like, will people see a fem uh, like a a woman boxing movie like that's like right in the Rocky universe? And she deaf, so the whole yeah, thing being sign language. Yeah. Shout out tough. to that young actress. There's a lot of young actors right now coming up that's doing sign language. Young black actors. Hey, bro, she hit that little white girl with that haymaker, bro. Oh, she. I'm so proud of her. Right? I was like, that's right. so proud. So proud. I was but, like, um, how you gonna rip? How you gonna rip uh, somebody art? She. Yeah. Yo. But I know. The, hey, that was perfect, though. The camera. They, when deaf, they saw that so joke. They can't really like, be mean that joke by was like, ripping. regular kids. While that joke was ripping, you just see punch was swinging. Go, wow. <laughs> but I just want to give a shout out to all these young actors. Like this, is the second young actor that's like that's deaf, um, and they had to learn ASL. This uh, this happened recently on The Last of Us. That little black boy on there, and oh, he was okay. deaf. And I'm that's not dope. gonna spoil it for you, but you should watch that show. I but, still ain't, but I've been watching Wu Tang series and yeah, some other but, stuff. Um, yeah, but um, yeah. Shout out to that because it's 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 dope to see that more deaf actors are coming up, especially since that deaf actor won that Oscar for best actor last year. So yeah. it's, it's dope to see, you know, it's dope to see. This episode is brought to you by the good people at No Clearance. All right, go to noclearancepod.com slash shop. We have merchandise for you to wear. Please support the brand. Okay, we got our new clearance collection. All right, with the Defy the Trends, Be the Standard shirts, as well as the No Clearance colle- uh, shirt and the Superior No Clearance shirt with the dad hats. Dad hats are selling big. Okay, so please make sure you go to noclearancepod.com slash shop, buy you some merch to support the podcast so we can get bigger and better every week. Thank you. Back to the show. And man, um, <clears throat> as soon as I came home from this movie, bro, I watched the Chris Rock special. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I I was uh, about to, too, but I did it. It was awesome because, I mean, live. It was live. Yeah, I was going to say, that's dope. That Straight was Straight up live in Baltimore. Yeah. Um, I thought Chris Rock. Hey, before Rock, you get into this, can I tell you what happened to me after I went to the movie? Okay. Quick sidebar. Yeah. So- Jada and I went to a re- went to this restaurant across from the hotel where y'all stayed at. Like that oh, plaza for across where the I way. I stayed at? For yeah, where y'all stayed at. That okay. plaza across the way, they had this restaurant we've been interested <laughs> in going to called Game yeah. Time. It's called It's Game Time. Okay. And, bruh, we went in there. First off, the door was locked. And then they had to let us in and pat us down to go sit in this restaurant. And that's just what I should I should have just went home and watched Chris Rock. <laughs> and then these niggas had the nerve, the audacity to include gratuity in the check. How much? 20%. Gratuity? 20? 20%. That's tragic. Back to the Chris Rock special. I just had to put, put that in. Put that, put that in there. <laughs> 20% though. That was crazy. So Chris Rock, <laughs> Chris Rock had a lot to talk about. Yes, uh, Chris Rock special is called Selective Outrage. Yes, uh, perfect so name. He, yeah, he talked about uh, a lot of different things. Meghan Markle. He talked about uh, just parenting. Um, mm, the Kardashians. You know, people, people want attention. The Kardashians. Um, abortion. <laughs> 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 and of course. He saved the Will Smith jokes for the end. Yeah. Um, and let me just say, this is a prime <laughs> example of don't just read the headlines 
and watch the clips, watch the whole thing. Yeah. Because all that stuff out of context yeah. sounds terrible. Yeah, everything out of context would sound bad, but I think I, here's the thing. I I am I'm a big fan of Chris Rock. I I've gone on HBO, went back and watched a lot of the old specials. <clears throat> and I like how he's just totally prepared. Like this man, he got the script in his mind and I'm running through this joint. Like <laughs> whether y'all think it's funny or not, I would just keep going. You know what I'm saying? And he just be having some crazy takes. Hey, the you know way he talks is hilarious to me. Yeah. Just the way yeah. he's... <laughs> Listen, people. <laughs> Yo, when he, I'll never forget when he, uh, one of his specials, he was like, Hillary just need to get on her knees and suck that dick. <laughs> hey, <laughs> talk- <laughs> hey, when he was like, you know what, you know what uh, Elon Musk does every time he sells the Tesla? He gets his dick sucked. I was like, I lost it. You Yo, know why he looked weird like that? Because the man has negative cum. Negative cum was crazy. <laughs> negative cum was crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hey, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, bro. I watched the Harry and Meghan Netflix special. That's yeah. Like, maybe not the whole thing, but I watched some of it. And I can understand. I can partly understand why Chris Rock is like, bruh. Yeah, I thought that from the get go. I was like, of course these niggas is racist. They are the original racist. <laughs> and my thing is, I I know you shouldn't go into nothing with expectations. They are the whitest of white families. You they should, are the you, original yeah. whites. <laughs> I, I know you shouldn't go into something with with expectation and stuff, but like, like she they they talked about how she was like a very educated person. Like she yeah. did, she did a lot of international public affairs, and you sitting there like, how did you not know? This family was gonna, you know, show they yeah. show they butt, you know, show they ass. Like they are no aware, sense. they are aware of every single generation of their family. Now I will every say, single generation I, of their family they're aware of every member. They have the whole timeline, the whole family tree. I, Ain't one nigga in that fucking family tree, and you gonna be the first one, and you damn near clear black. You ain't even black. You just as light as me, and you got and you don't expect. Them to treat you like they treat light skinned people in America? No, it's the one drop rule. You got to drop a nigga in you. To them, you a nigga. I, I'm just saying. I will say this: what I, the media, what the media did to her was oh, very fucked up. That was, and I think that was really the the. You know, I I don't know. I ain't finish it, but what the media did to her was cold, bro. Now his I know he now valid, he didn't talk though. about that, yeah, but I do like valid. how he just talked about. The fact that, you know, it's like selective outrage. Like, you got to see mm-hmm. the other side. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Now, the Will Smith joint, I'm I'm glad that he, uh, I'm, I'm glad he didn't talk about getting slapped by Will Smith right after getting slapped. And he got his money first. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm going to save well, my money. Exactly. I don't know why people, I've seen some things where people are like, oh, how are you going to call someone a bitch ass nigga and you didn't do nothing when you got slapped in the face? And it's like, at the same time... He clearly time, did. Whoever said that ain't watched the special. Yeah, they ain't watched the special. He answered all the questions. Yeah, he answered all the questions. But um, because it was definitely just a response to the clip. But the whole thing, it made sense. Everything he said in that last 20 minutes of him going off on Will and Jada was 100% valid. And I would have said the same shit. Even when he called Jada a bitch. He only called her a bitch once. And I would have said this bitch too. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he was just like, "You not gonna take out your frustrations on something else or me?" Like, why was I? He pretty much was like, "Why was I the result of some of something that would wasn't even my problem?" Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And mm-hmm. I was like, "Yeah, he ain't lying. He ain't lying yeah. about that, bro." Everyone, they mama was calling Will Smith a bitch. Everybody, I got, I got, I got a question. I got a question about the uh, special. Yeah. I just want to throw this scenario at you, right? Uh, your daughter, if your daughter uh got kicked out of school, a really expensive school, you know, for just doing some stupid stuff, and uh, <laughs> and she just thought she was going to get back in. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm rich, if I'm rich like Chris Rock, I get let her get kicked out. If I'm poor and I, I and she had to get a scholarship, 
I'm whooping the ass. Okay. And trying to get her back in that school. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It depends. Yeah, yeah. That's only rich niggas could do that shit. You only could do that. You only could do shit like you only teach a kid a lesson like that if you're rich. I don't know. Like, Even if no, I'm, I'm broke. I'm, that's how I feel. Like, if you not if you're middle class, like it depends on the level of school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, look for him in that situation. I thought that was a good move. Now yeah. for him to say, I ain't tell nobody till this Netflix special that I did that. <laughs> hey, whoa, wild man well, for that one. Hey, hey. <laughs> I hope that was like there was some fibs in that story because that's crazy. I Bruh, mean, she in culinary I, school now. I did find it cool that he ended the show with his daughters on screen and stuff. But like, I'm sitting oh, there like, yo, that. that's wild. Yeah, he ended the show with his daughters on screen and his and his mother in in, okay. in France. Um, but I was like, that's wild. He was just like, I I kept this to myself. <laughs> and the first time they go find out, hey, it's today. I honestly though, I agree with everything he said. Where he wants his daughters to be bougie as hell. Oh yeah, big facts. I'm fine with that. Hey, if that's what you want to do, especially like, especially with him saying his mom, what what we're going, but basically one, not even two generations removed. Yeah, you know, it's dope to be like, oh yeah, my daughter, <laughs> the Four Seasons. That's my favorite hotel. Like, I love that. Now, as a person. In real life, is not that the greatest thing? No, but for the joke, I love it. I mean, I think in real life, I think even in real life, bro. Um, at one point, at some point, one a generation of black people don't need to know all the struggles. Like, yeah. yes, yes, they should learn our history, but do they need to know all the struggles? Yeah, they do. Don't they need, need to, to go through, or yeah. not even because they can't know it, but do they need to go through a serious struggle? Like, that's nah. like. They, do they need to go through something that's not even humane? Because a lot of stuff our mm-hmm. ancestors have been through is not humane. It's not humane yeah. struggle. It's not something a person should actually go through. Everybody going to have their own struggles in life. But to uh to to go through something that just like I said, is not humane, it just don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? For us to yeah. put them through that. So I get it. Now the fourth season, that was a funny one. I that was funny. Lie. I I like how he broke up the 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 special in the three parts. I don't know if you noticed, but every time he uh, said, I don't need another rapper mad at me is when he switched, like, yes. he switched up what he was talking about. <laughs> I thought that was, like, genius. I was like, no, man. Sometimes I don't need another you, forget, you forget that, like, he's not just no regular comedian. No, you know what he's saying? one of the legends. You, yeah, you forget. Like, it's so, it, it, it's very odd to me that every time we have these comedians that we call the greats, every time they say something, Exactly what they say in their special is gonna happen in the media. Yeah, like the select, <laughs> like the, like the selective outrage. Like literally, people are upset at him for for calling Jada Pinkett a bitch in the special. But if you watch the fucking full special, you, you would understand. You would have heard the anger in his voice too. Like, yep. like, it's just so crazy that like people don't even watch these things and then put judgment in. Um, put their opinions on it and not even get the full scope of what, the, what he's talking about. And then at the same time to defend Will Smith, like you could defend Will Smith for what he did. Cause like at the time it's like, yeah, I'm going to defend my wife. But at the same time, if you ain't wrong, if you're like on Chris Rock's side and saying like, that was, that was ridiculous, you know? Very ridiculous, especially to do it at that point. Cause I know yeah. he would have saw Chris Rock at another time. Mm-hmm. He could have seen Chris Rock hey. behind the stage. Hey, he could have slapped him behind the stage and no one would have seen it. No one would have knew about it. It had just been a rumor. It would have been just a, been a rumor. Yeah. And the only way we would have known about it is if Chris Rock says something. But he, Chris Rock, I do agree with Chris Rock saying, like, why he slapped me when I didn't even do anything. Like, I made fun yeah. of her for concussion. Ain't nobody fucking like concussion. I don't care what Owen said. Fuck that movie till I die. That movie <laughs> ruined my favorite thing for me and everybody else. I hate that fucking movie. And that was the that in my opinion, that was the first that was Will Smith's first strike in my book. This is only strike, but it's first strike. That's hilarious. I wasn't a fan of the movie either. I ain't yeah, gonna, that, I ain't that gonna movie lie. was stupid. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, it's a um, stupid ass movie. But ruining football for everybody. <laughs> But also, um, Chris, he also said, I'm not playing the, um, 
what's the word? Victim? Start with a D. Yes, I'm not playing a victim. Like, yeah. and he was like, I really want to make this click. <laughs> I'm not going to be the victim in this situation. Um, and maybe you could tell he wasn't because, like, of course, it wasn't like he went, got slapped and then just going, you know, trying yeah. to try tear his name down. It ain't, it ain't even like yeah. he tried to tear down Will Smith's name. It was just like, bro, could slap me, bro. Like, he was like, yeah, I love really Will Smith up to this point. I love yeah. that man. <laughs> and people really overreacted to the emancipation joke. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he was like, man, now I gotta watch Emancipation and be happy he get whooped. Cause <laughs> I, I, hey, if somebody you don't fuck with is in a slave movie or any movie where they getting their ass whooped, you're gonna be cheering for the person whooping their ass. You just gonna it don't matter if it was a slave movie or not. You gonna smile a little bit. You yeah, you gonna be like, yeah, fuck that nigga, man. Like he was being <laughs> fully honest. Like he didn't say, "Oh, I hope I I enjoyed watching him get whooped." No, he said, "Now I gotta watch it and be happy about it." Yeah, making nah. me a damn Uncle Tom. Um, it, like that shit was too funny. I, I, this definitely reminded me. It didn't have to remind me because I was I was a big fan of Tambourine, the Tambourine special. I really liked yeah. that one, and I've heard <laughs> some people say, "You know, he." I've heard some people say, "He, Dave Chappelle, whoop de whoop," but yeah. this man is a legend, bro. I seen people calling it a fucking minstrel show. What is that? I don't even know what that. A is. minstrel show is like, it's like a, a uh, when a uh, those shows when black people used to be shucking and jiving for the white people on stage. I ain't seen no white people out there, up there. Uh, he only showed black people in the audience. And my and uh, what's it called, Bruh, He did a live special on Netflix, first time ever. This is the first time they ever did anything live on Netflix. No one's talking about that. Even that though, I've never, I've, uh, may, maybe it's happened before, like on cable television. I've never seen nobody do an hour live, like no editing, no, you know, no, you know, yeah. you know, no production on it. Like he, I think it's he happened just before. It, bro. I think it's happened before. It's happened numerous times. I think um, what. Uh, one of the uh, what is it? Martin Lawrence Live. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, like this, it's a common thing. Usually, it's recorded live, but and they don't edit it. And they just put it up, even even though they still edit a little bit. That's what but, I'm saying. Uh, well, that's, that's, that's right they do there. live cuts. That's what they do. That's how they do it. They do the live cuts when they cut to the audience. It was, it was impressive. Yeah. Um, they it just see impressive. Loki and Rosie from uh, Say Less with Cass in the stands. They showed them like three I thought times. I saw them. Yeah, they showed him like three times. I was like, oh, look at them. That's what's up. <laughs> Getting the Netflix special. But I thought oh, the special man. was speaking great. Of, um, speaking, of lo- speaking of some New Yorkers. Yeah. Angela Yee is in the news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some Angela Yee controversy with The Breakfast Club. Yeah, I, um, I, I honestly thought it was a, it's a publicity stunt to promote her new show. But I mean, I she was... I don't think so. <laughs> because she was... I think she was there to promote, so I don't think she had to yeah. do a publicity. She was there. No, no, but like this is getting people talking about her. I mean, uh, that's I don't fair. think she I... did it intentionally. You know? Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Now I'm curious. My thing is, I wonder what she considers people working for the Breakfast Club because I see plenty of women working. For Charlemagne, but I don't know yeah. if that means working for the Breakfast Club. You know what I'm saying? Well, I also wonder if it was. I wonder if she meant like when she started there, when she first got there, was it all men? It's like so much. She, there's no context. I mean, there's not a lot of context to what she said. Well, um, she said um, that uh, she was talking about the room itself, like in the room. Got you. No, yeah, she and, she was definitely and, and the only Envy. woman. Yeah, because I seen um, DJ Envy was like, "Nah, that's not true." Blah blah blah, and then he said on the Breakfast Club, he t- he spoke to her privately, and she was like, "No, I was saying like in the room, like me, Charlemagne, and you." Yeah, like yeah. that was just I was by myself, which is valid. I just think people took it out of context, and then it's like going to be used to promote her new show. I just can't believe Lil Ma. Was it Lil Ma? <laughs> Lil Mama. Thank you. That's how much she, that's how irrelevant. But this is coming out, but a lot of people were talking about like, oh, Angelie never defended women when they was on the show with her. 
with uh, when they were on the show and like Charlemagne or DJ Envy was getting wild. Like they were saying that she contributed to it. I don't but know, like, bro. Like, I have show. I've watched a a ridiculous amount of Breakfast Club in it. Me too. Like I watched like back the, back when back when back when Breakfast Club was on World Star. Yeah. Like that's how long we've been watching. Well, here's the thing: a lot of these interviews that we be watching. After the after we watch them, a a lot of people be like, "Oh, that was fucked up. This is fucked up." Like, yeah, I, I mean, it might be me. I just never caught that stuff. Yeah, and I'm bro, probably well, you know. Yeah, a lot of interviews that like I never not noticed anything wild, but to some people, it's like, "Yo, that was wild, disrespectful." Blah, blah, blah. Especially when when Charlamagne made little mama cry. But that was nothing. That was definitely intentional. It was... <laughs> but it's just bad funny. But that shit affected her so much. <laughs> but it's just like, all right, and part of me is like, it's going to be bad radio <clears throat> if every time they say something, she tries to correct them. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, all right, maybe. Because she'll be like, not no, really her. don't say that. Like, she'll yeah. say things like that. It's like, I don't know what else they want her to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, people, I just, look, bro. And that's just what she like... fucking said, though. It was hard being the only woman in the room. <laughs> Niggas are stupid. We just figured it out. <laughs> what the fuck? She just said it. She said it and people pointed it out. Oh, she never stood up for it because she, what she just fucking said. Oh. She's the only woman in the room. Yep. Wow, Jay. Wow. Wow. You deep brother, man. Hey. You know, I ain't you, even smoke. You deep brother, man. I ain't even smoke today. The thing I, is, bro, it earlier. just seemed like. And, you know, nobody wants to see anybody be successful. That's just really yeah. what it comes down to, It's bro. just crazy, Like, she honestly. finally, she finally, after, you know, being in that spot for a very long time, has her own radio show now. hmm And it's like, of course, at this point in her career, now people want to come out and say something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This, oh, God. It's, it's like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's crazy. Like she bro. just said why. Like, all these people bringing up how she didn't have to defend women. She just said why. Shout out to Angela Yee, bro. I, I, yeah, I'm, a Angela. Of her, um, I'm a fan of her. Um, I'm a fan of her. Um, her show. What's that joint? Lip uh, lip, lip service. service. I like her lip service podcast. Um, I never listened to it, it, it in that, my that life. That thing. Good for her. That thing get freaky, bro. I can't do it. I would every imagine. Day. I've heard. I've I've seen like yeah. clips and stuff. Uh, lip service podcast. She she got a radio voice. I really rock yeah. with it. I rock with Real it. Real good radio voice. Some people just not born with those type of voices, you know. And, and the crazy thing is, bro, for a long time we didn't even see her face because of the way yeah. the cameras was angled. Hey, I didn't know what she looked like for the longest time. Like they ain't even show her face, bro. It would just be Charlemagne and Envy. Like, what makes you think well, we want to <laughs> see Charlemagne face? <laughs> the that whole shit was interview. all discolored. Oh that my shit was goodness! All discolored. DJ Envy looked like a peanut. It was just like, come on. DJ Envy, I respect this man, but his questions sometimes are the, some of the worst fucking questions. <laughs> and he questions. got no thought behind him, and they be like, "Oh, can you explain?" <laughs> like, uh, 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 so, uh, 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 and like, bruh, and, and come on, Charlamagne, think about the question. Hey, and Charlamagne be like, "But why would you ask that?" <laughs> he always, he always says, "Why would you ask that, bruh?" <laughs> like, what you trying to do? Oh, shit. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Canva. Canva is a graphic design platform used to create social media graphics, presentations, posters, documents, and other visual content. The app includes templates for users to use to design whatever they want for the free. The platform is free and free to use, but also offers a paid subscription, Canva Pro, which will unlock an even larger library of graphics, images, templates, and videos to add to your designs. So please tap the link in the description and get started. All right, man, we'll move on, dog. We'll move on. All right, yeah. what should we do first, bro? Uh, emasculation or John Moran? You know what? Let's just not talk about the emasculation. You can't, the conversation can't be done properly with just us two. I want a woman's perspective. That's fair. That's fair. So <laughs> We ain't never going to speak about this we topic. We ain't never going to get to this. 
<laughs> Let's talk about Ja Warren. I don't, I don't, I don't want to sound like a hotel anyway, bro. Like I gotta get my ja thoughts Warren. together. Ja Warren, you talking about Ja Warren? Ja Warren. I'm not going to skip. I'm not going to say that nickname, bro. The cold, bro. Hey, nah. It, hey, it's self inflicted. The nigga wanted to be a gangster. Let the nigga be a gangster. I guess I don't know. Hey, bro. All right. So let's explain for those yeah. who may not know. Um, John Morant was on IG Live sometime last week. Was well, sometime last? It was week. over the weekend. John Morant was on IG Live after a loss, by the way. After a loss in Denver. In Denver. Um, he in showed a gun on his IG Live in the either. I don't know if it was a strip club it or not. But he showed a gun. Showed a gun in the club, and the NBA suspended him for two games. Mind you, he was already mm-hmm. under investigation for allegedly slapping a Yo. 17-year-old. Allegedly punching a 17-year-old in the head 10 to 12 times. Yes. He was, and then uh, running he, into his house and getting a gun. He's, he's under investigation. <laughs> yes, Joe. He's <laughs> under, uh, under investigation <laughs> for that. And uh, so now he's under investigation, uh, not only because he had a gun, but we got to know whose gun it was and did it cross mm-hmm. state lines. And, you know, if it crossed state lines, depending on what the gun laws are on those states, you yeah. know, we don't know what he could be charged with. I also, didn't think about that. Also, just the gun rules in regards to uh, the, the franchises. Um, yeah. I think Memphis had a gun policy. Has a like the Memphis Grizzlies has a gun policy, like no guns within like fifty feet of the premises or something like that. Yeah, allegedly that's what I've heard. So it's a lot of things going on with this man, and it sucks because he is turning into one of the faces of the league. Yeah, if if not already, he's turning into one of the faces of the league due to his amazing uh, athleticism. You know the stuff he does in the air. Uh, we haven't really seen since Derrick Rose. For real, for real. Um, and it's just like, where is this coming from? Yeah. You know? It kind of reminds me. All right. This is a hot. T- it kind of reminds me of Aaron Hernandez, low key. Bruh, I was thinking that too. Bruh. Yeah, low key, low key. But before I get into that, that hot take, I just want to say, like, like, it just doesn't seem right. Because last year, like he, it just feels like with with his ego growing, he thinks he can get away with more and more shit. Mm. Mm. Like he's doing dumb shit for what reason? And then I don't know. I just don't agree with it. And it's it's like disrespectful because I guess I don't know if you heard this, but they had, they just had a players only meeting before the uh, before they went to Denver. Um, Stephen Adams led the meeting and was like, "Hey, hey guys, let's." We're 12 and 20 on the road. <laughs> let's stop. Let's get more let's get more discipline and not go out when we're on the road. Now go out this state, you know, try and stay more disciplined. And then this nigga went out. And not only mm. would he go out, he flashed a gun. Mm. So it's just like, oh, so now you just allegedly. You know, allegedly flashed the gun? Allegedly everything you just said. I don't know. No, no, sure. the meeting was the meeting happened. <laughs> the meeting happened. The team meeting happened. The team meeting is not a legend. Okay. <laughs> so, and he still went out. It's alleged yeah, no, that the meeting, the alleged part of the meeting is that was because Ja keeps going out. It was for just Ja. That's allegedly. But they did have a meeting saying, hey, let's try to get more discipline on the oh, road. Oh, wow. You know yeah. what's interesting? This reminds me of uh, college. Joe Namath. Oh. Joe so, Namath. Yeah, Joe Namath, man. Like the the legend of Joe Namath is like before he was <laughs> named captain of the New York yeah. Jets, uh, he was a party. Like he party. He would go out, yeah. you know what I'm fur saying? Coat. And then Huh? Fur, fur coat. coat. I thought you said fur coke. And I was oh, like, no. whoa. Probably that too. <laughs> but the funny thing is, the year they won the Super Bowl, they named him captain. And the, uh, and uh, some of the players was like, bro, we just named him captain so he would stop doing this stupid stuff. And, <laughs> and, and Joe Namath, like, after they said that, you, there's a, you go to Joe Namath's confessional, right? And he was like, when they named me captain. <laughs> like, tears going down his eyes. Like, <laughs> that was the greatest 
thing I've ever, my team has ever done for me. <laughs> oh my God. Captain. That's so funny. Like, That's so funny. That's so funny. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> but not, John Moran, I just think he needs to get better people around him. I just think he needs well, to go maybe ahead. mature a little bit. Yeah, like, you I can think, make mistakes. Um, but like, I, okay, we have seen, we have seen two black men so far this basketball season literally try to destroy their lives. Who was the other we, one? Ime Udoku. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And John ja Morant. And now my question is, like, is self-sabotage, like, is this like a... That's a some thing. Bl- some That's black... Thing. Sh- like, no. The, no, it may be not. But it's just seeming like, depending on where you come from, I, I, I feel like I felt... I feel like I've done self sabotage before in my life, but it's just one of those situations where, like, you feeling like you doing too good, like imposter syndrome. It's that feeling of like, bro, like, because apparently John Morant just just signed to Power. He just had a crazy uh deal with Power. Mm-hmm. He was about to be the face of Nike, bro. Yeah. And sometimes it's like. Dang, you know, it could be that thought of like, bro, like, uh, you know, that thing of like, you know, if I do too good, folk ain't gonna rock with me no more. Cause now I'm like, you know, either this guy or it's just like, I don't deserve, I really don't deserve this. You know what I'm saying? I don't think or, it's that at all. And, but it's also like some people possibly just want to be. Maybe they just operate better under that underdog label. I'm not saying this gives the nigga an excuse to like show a gut on Instagram live, but it just seems interesting. I feel like some people just work better under the label of underdog, uh, always trying to get to the top. But then when they get there, it's like they don't know how to handle that level of success, right? Because I'm thinking, I'm looking at John Morant. Yeah. Bro, I went to Murray State. I'm not saying it's a terrible program, but what makes you a player of his caliber decide to go to a lower level school like that? You feel me? Yeah. And I'm like, is it because you just want to stay? You want to be, you want to always feel that underdog feeling? Because being at the top and staying at the top takes another different level of discipline, right? Yeah. We look at LeBron James for all these years. But he ain't even done nothing yet. To even have this 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 feeling, you know what I'm saying? He ain't done shit, bro. Memphis they ain't was, done shit. They Memphis ain't done was shit. Number two last year, bro. So what? Did they win? Did they did they wait? Did, did they win anything? Did they get a ring? Did he get MVP? Did he get? Did he get? The he got most title? improved. He got most improved, and he got two awards last year. Okay, but he still ain't done nothing. They ain't done nothing. Don't discredit this nigga. I'm not discrediting, but I'm saying that he ain't done nothing to get him to the point to feel like he's at the top. No, you're, but you're also talking about his athletic career. Now, what he's doing is destroying himself off the court. Cause I'm yes. my bad. Cause res- respectfully, I what he's you're right on the court. The, you could clearly see he's focused. He on the grind, right? But you can clearly see that off the court, there's something. It's something there. Something is going on. I think he's just and, trying and, to You know, cool. I don't, we don't follow, dude. We don't, I don't, I don't, I see what you're saying. Me, personally, I don't want to put it like that because I don't know what he, I don't know what's going on in, in cut life. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, it's crazy. It's just it crazy like to, to watch. like he needs better people around him. He needs better people around him. It's the people around you to allow you to do the things he's doing. Hey, I mean, that's fair, but at the end of the day, bro, it's his life. It is his life. But at the same time, if you surround your people, surround yourself, surround yourself with people who who won't allow you to get in no shit like that, you're, you're not going to get in the shit like that. And it also sounds like, like people to hold him accountable for his actions. No, it also sounds like he took offense just going off of this players meeting, what you were saying. Cause there's a lot of people that'll take offense to like somebody trying to tell them what to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he know, I, he know that meeting was for him. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And then, and then for them to have a players meeting and then they lose, he was like, 
I know for a fact he was <laughs> probably played with niggas like that. I know for a fact it was like, okay. But that's, you got to get you out say your we own don't ego. Go, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You say we don't go out and then we lose. Okay, nigga. I, I'm a, but he was talking about that. But there's a the thing they be going out after the games, and they be and they still. I mean, it don't matter. They're twelve and twenty on the road. That's terrible. That's terrible. That is actually <laughs> terrible. I thought they were doing good this season too. Well, twelve and twenty on the road. I don't know what they record is though. I think they're decent. I think they're middle of the pack in the West. And they was like one of the top in the conference last year. Memphis good be record. Yeah. I don't know, bro. It just seemed like uh, self sabotage or something that it is self sabotage for sure. While it is a everything, every every you know everybody probably deal with it. Thirty eight twenty five. Yeah, they in the, they in the mix. While it is something that I'm sure everybody deal with, it just seeming like it just seems. Of course, because I I keep up with black people more, but it just seems prevalent, especially amongst these black athletes. Where it's like, bro, why would you? even be close to a, a gun when you have millions of dollars on the line. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Now, Boston me personally, um, my, you know, initially, initially I was like, okay, you show a gun on IG live. Now the question, of course, I think they should still do investigation, but my thing yeah. is, all right, if it's his gun, you know what I'm saying? If it's his gun and he legally illegally owns the gun, then it's like, well, what are we suspended for? But then, you know, uh, he also is an employee for a corporation. Yeah, you know and he's saying? the face of it, you know? Yeah. It's tough. It's like, yeah, it's, you know. But he only got suspended by the league for two games. He got benched indefinitely by the Grizzlies. And I think it's because of that damn players meeting. <laughs> 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 it's definitely because hey, that damn players Imagine meeting. you had the players meeting. Hey, look, y'all. We got to stop going out, Ja. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> we got, we, hey, guys, we guys, out here, really got to stop. Out here, we out here going to clubs, Ja. And just doing all types of stuff. It's crazy stuff out here with weapons in our, in our trucks, yeah. Ja. <laughs> just keep saying, Ja, like at the end. Like <laughs> now, I'm not saying it's you, Ja. But you know, it, hey, it, after the game, we can't have a sit, right, Ja? <laughs> hey, look, hey, look. <laughs> Steven Adams like, now I'm not calling Ja out. And then somebody beside him like, yes, this nigga is. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just but like why even even but be about like why is he trying to be about that life, man? Like he don't need to do that no more. Bro, bro, Memphis is a different city, bro. I don't agree with that. Bro, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. I took a <laughs> and this may not be anything to do with it, but I took a bad trip to Memphis one time. And we uh we was on Bill Street. By the way, that's the like the only thing Memphis got. Yeah. There's no point of going to Memphis if you just if you, we was on Bill Street. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Everything is around Bill Street, tourist wise. You okay. go anywhere outside of Bill Street, yeah. You in Memphis. You know okay. what I'm saying? You in the hood. Okay. So we we ended up me and uh some of the some of my homies we ended up going to this market. We ended up going a little bit past Bill Street. We saw this market. We out there chilling, just standing there. Police, police just walk up to us. This black policeman, he was like, "Y'all not from around here?" I was like, "How you know?" Like your pants at your waist. <laughs> 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 it, look, look, bro. He literally, he literally was just like. Y'all keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Walked away. Goddamn black I was cops. Like, I was like, bro, we in a different city, huh? Like, like we really in Memphis, bro. That's crazy. I don't know, bro. I mean, a, a lot of craziness has gone on in Memphis lately, But bro. what does that have to do with him? What does that have to do with him? It's like he is like, dealing with different type of niggas, bro. It don't matter to me. What, no matter where I am in my life. No matter what city I decide to live in, and you know I'm a popping off type nigga. If I'm making 200 mil guarantee, you I ain't gonna. The only time you gonna see me is when I'm on national television playing basketball. Like I understand, like you make like this is like you're ruining your your shit, bro. Like that's not wise. And hey, I don't. Man, I don't and, and, 
it's interesting because I I do I be thinking that too, but I also had to remind myself I'm just not in that position. If I ever got yeah. in that position, and I you know I played my cards right, then and I you know I feel like I could I could say like this nigga really tripped, but yeah. I'm also like he is 23, bro. Like he uh, he's still a young boy. Yeah, you, you man, know what I'm but... saying? And it's like, you know, I just hope he'll get it together. But I'm also not going to put myself in a position where, like, I'm just really judging this thing. That makes sense why he was playing basketball with a 17-year-old. Yeah, he was 23, bro. He like, yeah. I mean, for... That's like, He's probably 22 that's like, when that happened. Technically, only two years removed from college. Yeah, I, I, I forget when he got a, to the league. Hey, but. when I was 22, I almost beat up a 17-year-old. So I exactly. understand that now. But still, you in the NBA. I'm just yes, a, a, a yeah, you are in the way. NBA, but all the money does is exacerbate your character. It, it just shows you really no, you're who right. you are. You're right. And, and this, this you still got, I mean, John at 23, really is? at 23, it's not that that's who he is, just you realize money don't mature you. Yeah. No, like, that's right. just work you got to do for yourself on your own. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, just because you throw some money at somebody don't mean he just going to switch it up all of a sudden. Like, mm. The the NFL, the NBA, all these major leagues, like it should be money and they need like a life coach. They need like some extra stuff with that, bro. You can't just throw money at these niggas and say, come to practice at eight. But here, but here's my thing. You know how many niggas from the hood play professional sports and don't get into no shit like this? So like like this there's always niggas that get into shit. But like it's just it's just it's concerning to me because it's like this ain't the first this he's not the first nigga from the hood to make it. No, I mean look, you would have thought everybody learned from Gilbert Arenas. Yeah, especially with the because that was Remember very they upsetting. Shooting at each other in the locker room or something like that. They didn't shoot at each other in the locker room, but they pulled people. guns out on each other in the locker room. Gilbert Arenas, yeah, pulled guns out on him. Then he come, <laughs> he came out two pistols. Yeah. <laughs> Like like the Matrix, bro. Hey, bro, the city was different back then when Gilbert Arenas was balling, bro. The city was just a different vibe, bro. Once he once he stopped, it was like just dead. Mm. I don't know how to explain it, bro. I mean, it was yeah, sad. the Wizards ain't been good for a long ain't time. Ain't been good since, bro. Yeah, I mean, John Wall kind of gave the city some life, but yeah, it they wasn't went the same. Yeah, they played a couple times, but then it they did not, John Wall dirty. It was not the same, bro. John Wall, but John Wall, get to speak about basketball players. John Wall's another one of them niggas that he he and he a crip straight up, <laughs> and he don't even get in no situations like this. This nigga didn't get in trouble until COVID, cause he yeah. went to a party. So yeah. like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Good for John Wall. They doing that nigga dirty, bro. He twenty three. He got plenty of time to turn around, man. Yeah, no, he do. Yeah, I just hope time. he learns his lesson after all this shit because he's fucking up his bag. He's fucking it up. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, he ain't never going to not be good at basketball. So, like, the bag ain't fucked up that bad. It's not, yeah, it's not about the basketball. It's like, okay. Like, uh, professionally yeah. wise. Like. Outside of, outside of sports. That can really fuck up. It's. I, for me, I'm just thinking of like life. It's just like yeah. It's like, do you not want to be? He can't be in the league the if you go to jail. Like, do you not want to be the one that you know is the one that your family looks up to? That you do yeah. not want to be the that guy. It feel like he's just trying to avoid a certain responsibilities yeah. that comes yeah. with. Being a, like a man, man, you know what I'm saying. And I, ain't, I'm just saying what it looked like for me. You know, I ain't trying to judge. Yeah. It's just saying it just looked like he's just trying to avoid being who he's supposed to be, or mm. who people expect him to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. And that's it's tough. It's tough to actually like decide. I'm a walking. I'm a walking no shoes. Like actually be the person. Yeah. Actually be no, that, that guy that people find. You know, people rely on. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, those some no, tough no. shoes to fill because if you ain't been in that position, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot. It's a, it's heavy, you know, having to take be that guy that everyone comes to. I do, yeah. It's just you know it's, it's just a, it's disappointing, bro. That's what it is. It's disappointing for him to be in situ to get himself in situations like that. Like you have high expectations for the guy because he's a good player. Seems like he's a good kid. 
and then he gets into issues like this, you know. It I th- yeah, it's just this point because of the player he is. But yeah. I mean, we we've seen ignorance like this from NBA players all the time. All the time. It's not like we don't see this. It's just the fact yeah. that it is John ja Moran. Like this guy yeah. is super talented. Way Kids too talented to be in some mess like this. Right. Yeah. Everybody Kids doing the gritty. Em. No, folk don't do the gritty because of Justin Jefferson. I'm sorry. The yeah, folk do the gritty good. because I didn't of John ja Moran. Justin Jefferson was. Like, <laughs> I didn't know who he was until I started playing fantasy football this year. Mind you, Not Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, and Jamal Chase been doing the gritty since LSU. Yeah, John ja Morant. As soon as he started doing it, he blew it, it up. Different. Yeah, he blew it up. Don't hit different, like, bro. I knew what it was. Like it was getting pop. It was going viral, and because it is because they made it vi- go viral, he elevated it. He got all the little white kids doing it and shit now. <laughs> like he, like yeah, he really blew yeah, it up. Yeah, man. But it's because they're um, young, you know? Nah, man. Keep them in my, I'm a, you know, we rooting for you, Ja. Hey. I, rooting for I, that, man. Hey, I hope he I hope he get, figures out this situation and he learns exactly, from the lesson and gets way better. There's way too many uh, way too many international players taking over the NBA. We got we got to keep this. We got to take this many. back, bro. We got to take this back. Hey. Hey. We keep, we, we, we got to get together because then we get more, we get more niggas like Ben Simmons in the league. And we don't need no more Ben Simmons in the league. All right? Yeah. We don't need no more. Yeah. Talk Sorry, about man. I need to go to a psychologist to shoot the basketball. I don't don't get me started on best <laughs> civics. I don't. Don't, don't start. Started. Don't start. Please don't. I, I <laughs> do not. We're going to move on. We're going to get into some music. Yeah. Okay. Because I want to give a shout out to Don Tolliver. Don Tolliver just dropped an album called Love Sick. Okay? okay. And what's cool about the Love Sick album is that it is based off a 14 minute mini movie that he produced and is on Amazon prime right now. Oh, okay. that's dope. Yeah. So he made that, a short that, film. He made a short film as part of the Amazon prime, like music series yeah. they've been doing. Oh, okay. So he made a, he made like a 15 minute video and the album is based off of that video. So like every person in the album has something, you know, dealing with love in a different way. Okay. And so each of the songs is kind of like that. I There's like no uh, it is it is man. My favorite off of that joint is for me with Cali Uchis. He uh he sampled "Give Me That Sugar." I forget the artist's name. He, he got a nice little reggae vibe on there. Elephant plus, man. Beanie yeah, Man. I mean, yeah. Plus he did the uh he also sampled for real. <laughs> Sound like an expensive track, but. <laughs> It's uh, it is that don't go hard. I, he got some. It's a, it's a it's a couple party. It's a couple dance joints on there, and then you know, top, Don Tolliver just different, bro. This man dropped the deluxe. Apparently, he dropped the deluxe like a week later. Oh shit! And, yeah, they usually so, do that though. They usually do that. Nah, sometimes the deluxe comes that. out. It, it depends. He, he yeah, dropped it very quickly. He dropped it very quickly, and then on the deluxe is Travis Scott. And uh, some other dude from Texas, but um, he been he been making his media runs, going around talking about the album. So, I it's cool. Travis Scott's right, right. coming Everybody soon. Everybody should check it out. Travis Izzy. Scott is coming soon. Yeah, apparently it's coming out this year. Hey, bro, I need it. Yeah, I need a rage. Respect. We need, we, hey, it's not. I ain't gonna do any of them concerts, but you know, I will listen to this. album. <laughs> Exactly. I'm not going to a concert, exactly. but I will I'm rage concert, in my home. Listen. Yeah. I'll my jump wife around will look my living at me room. Crazy. Exactly. Jump around in my car, but I ain't going to any of them concerts. I'm sorry. Ain't nobody going to a Travis Scott concert unless they're their true fans again. Yeah, it's gonna be a while. But I would he love to hear I would love to hear a Travis Scott album. A couple other yeah. joints dropped. Um uh, well I- ironically, uh well, I found out Don Tolliver and Kali Uchis have been dating for a long time. Oh. And Callie Uchis dropped her album the same day, around oh, the shit. same time. So she's Damn. out right now, too. Her music ain't really my vibe. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I'm sure a I lot like of people features. love it. I'm Beautiful not sure. Voice. she, But she's great on a feature. Like, I love her features. But when I listen to her albums, maybe I got to hear it again. Yeah. But it's not my vibe. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I know a lot no, of people I, that bad I rock understand that. Uh, another one I've been meaning to get to is Kenny Mason. Uh, cause he's like he's like Dreamville adjacent. I don't know if he's signed with yeah. Dreamville. Kenny Mason, I, I've I've seen that name before. Isn't he like a? He has like a kind of like a, oh, like kind of a rock sound going. It's, it's an alternative. Yeah. Alternative, so yeah. 
So in on uh his Angelic Hood Rat album, it was definitely a lot of like rock vibes. And I think the last one was just real rap stuff. But this one's called Three. I haven't gotten into it yet, but I plan on it. I plan on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Dreamville one more also thing. made the soundtrack for uh, Creed Three. Who? Dreamville also made the soundtrack. Oh yes. For Creed yes. Three. Yes. Dreamville balling, bro. Yeah, shoot. Dreamville balling. It's really a, it a competition them. between them and TDE, in my opinion. It's really just them two. I mean, it's interesting because it's like, you know, when you're comparing them, what's it called? TDE dropped. TD, TDE did the soundtrack for Black Panther. Yeah. Uh, Dreamville did the soundtrack for Creed. It's kind of in the same lane. Yeah. And you just see them kind of going back and forth. That's the only <laughs> reason you could compare them is because they're, 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 base- they're in the same lane. They're doing the same Literally shit. They have the artists we stuff. all love. TD's art is just a little bigger right now. Yeah. Well, the ones I mean, that SZA, dropping. the biggest R&B singer of, of, in our, of our generation. Yeah. For sure right yeah. now. She's Pretty killing much. it. Like, she's killing it. Uh, Pretty much, man. Speaking of R&B singers, before we go. Yeah. I, watched, I, I just watched the Whitney Houston movie. Okay. Have you seen it? I didn't intend on it. I'm not going to lie. I had okay. no intentions on watching this movie. How was it? It was good. The girl okay, who played cool, Whitney cool. Houston did a really good job playing Whitney Houston. She sounded exactly like her. Not didn't That's look like good. her too much, but she sounded exactly like she even had like the walk down the mannerisms. She killed it as as um Whitney Houston. Ashton Saunders. Old boy from Wu Tang who plays the RZA. Yes. Played Bobby Brown. How was he? Horrible. <laughs> bro, let me tell you, bro. Let His voice you. was too deep. <laughs> let me tell you, bro. This man. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> like. He's, he's not the strongest actor in my opinion. Hey, here's my thing, bro. I'm not the biggest fan of, I was not the biggest fan of Wu-Tang, right? But I've heard RZA talk. Yeah. He uh, don't maybe sound I was, like Maybe him. I'm missing something. But the way he be talking on the show. That's how he was talking as Bobby Brown. That's how he was talking as Bobby Brown. They gave him the gap and everything. It looked terrible. That was the worst part of the movie. Him as Bobby oh, Brown. Man. But See, the movie was good. He a good actor though. I liked him on um Equalizer. I liked him on Equalizer. In, I liked him Moonlight. on Native Son. He was good yeah, at Moonlight. Moonlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I ain't gonna I ain't gonna dis- yeah. I ain't trying to distance him, man. He, ain't he, he but like he, he he's not a good actor to play portray people in biopics. He's a good he's a good actor. I'm not gonna say he's not the strongest actor. He's a good actor. He's just not good at impressions. His voice is too deep and raspy. I guess since we're on biopics, I will say I don't know if you started watching season three of Wu Tang American uh, Saga. I but stopped watching it in the first season. I I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I know a lot of people are making fun of Buster Rhymes. Buster Rhymes was in like the first or second episode. And the person playing him, people was like, That ain't Buster. But I'm like, Oh, I gotta see that. I gotta see the actor. Dude. Uh I'll tell you what's an interesting scenario, and I got to finish the season, but Ghostface Killer, uh, of course, him and RZA's sister, he had a baby. Yeah. And so now they on tour, and Ghostface Killer got a little got a little lady on tour with him. Oh, that's and RZA an awkward didn't know, situation. Yeah, RZA, RZA wasn't on the previous tour. So RZA on this tour, like, yo, he talking to his brother, like, why? You know, why wow, ghost with this chick all the time? Like, like, bro, he he with our sister, and, and his brother knew. He brother knew about the situation. Yeah, so he was the only one out, and he was just like, bro, like our sister is like a grown woman, like she gonna do what she want. And I was like, that is that is kind of awkward, bro. To That's be on so tour. awkward. Hey, yeah, so if I see my sister's boyfriend or baby daddy, and we're cool, and he's fucking a bunch, of, he's fucking another woman, that's gonna make me upset, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't my, know how to why feel. Why you doing my the sister dirty like that, man? That's my we sister. Would have, we would have to be making a lot of money together. We'd have to have some words. <laughs> we're going to have to have some words. Not no fisticuffs because we got to still make this money, but we're going to have to have some words. You will be called a motherfucker a couple times. And that's an ego trip, too, because RZA yeah. is like part owner of Wu-Tang. At yeah. that time, like everybody else is just signing them, so it's just that's kind of very it's an interesting situation. Yeah, very you know interesting. But uh, man, but yeah. My other thing with the Whitney Houston movie, 
Oh, you got more. I had two things. I only I said know. the first thing. I know you had two. My bad. I didn't know you had two. I had two. I didn't know Wendy Houston was gay. I was in shock. Jada was in shock. We was all in shock. We had no idea. And apparently that was just common knowledge. No, I didn't know either. But I will say this. In the Bobby Brown special, there was always that lady. Robin. Like with, with Whitney. And yeah. Bobby was like, bro, who is this girl? <laughs> <laughs> like even in the Bible, I've been like, "Who is this girl?" It's Robin. Like, What's the case? Robin. Her name? So, yeah, they had Nefessa Williams player. You remember Nefessa Williams? Nefessa Black Williams. Lightning. Which one? There's two of them. Black the oldest daughter. Oh, okay. Yeah, I ain't mad at it's that. Like, I ain't gonna mad at it. They had to dress like a boy a little bit, but it was funny. She was. I ain't good. mad at that. Is one of the she greatest phrases too... a black man could ever say. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad at that. I ain't, I ain't mad, mad at that. Get you out of trouble. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. Get you out of trouble, bro. Um, also, before we go, I just want to say Snowfall is back. It is I back. Last season, season was one. trash. That's so crazy. Last season was trash, but this season, hey, they're killing it out the park, bro. Bro, that's what's up. Out the park. That's what's up, bro. I, I've been terrible with TV. I don't yeah. even know what I'll be watching no more. I just be put on old shows from like the 90s and just let it roll. <laughs> Fall asleep, bro. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy life yeah. out here, bro. I guess so, man. Oh, man. That's all we got today, bro. Everything yeah. good with you? Yeah, everything good, you know. Just happy to be here, you know. I feel you, bro. Hope you're staying healthy. Hope you're staying strong up there in Boston. Yeah. Stay warm, bro. You, y'all done got hit. Nah. Y'all supposed yeah. to get hit with another storm, apparently. Nah. All right, now. Last they, they, <laughs> hey, the last three storms was supposed to be bad. It ain't, it ain't really. It just rained. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I think uh, by this time of the year, winter's basically over. The snow's usually done. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah, fair. like we have the random snowstorm in April every now and again, but I don't think it's going to happen this year. This winter wasn't too bad. We had that one week. That was bad. I guess we can talk about that. What you got planned for the summer? We'll talk about that off air. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> hey, man. Once again, man, appreciate y'all for tuning in to the No Clearance Podcast. Big shout out to Angie and Sammy on our Patreons. We appreciate your hey, hey. support. If you That's would like two. early episodes get- of Dare to Talk and Technically Athletic, as well as um, some other things for the No Clearance Podcast that you wouldn't know of because you're not on the Patreon, uh, subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> One Starbucks cup a month, so one five dollars a month. Subscribe to the Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Show some love. A large coffee at D and D. You know, feel me? Five dollars. Also, if you're watching this on the YouTube, subscribe. Because some of y'all be watching this and you're not subscribed, so subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, hit the notification bell so that whenever we upload, you know on time. All right. Big shout out to everybody who's been listening. Big shout out to everybody who's been watching. Pops, I see you. I know you watch. I know you tuned in, Pops. <laughs> Mama, you might be watching too, Ma. What's up? Give you a shout out. All right. Make sure. Also, if you ain't got no clothes, you know what I'm saying? You want some merch, you want a nice hoodie. All right. Don't forget, uh, noclearancepod.com slash shop. Oh, yeah. Also, if you're not uh, subscribed to the email list or the Patreon, you don't know about the members only store where you get all of this stuff for like half off. (laughs) Damn near. So, hey. Also, if any of y'all know me, if you want some uh, merch for the low, just text me. (laughs) (laughs) Just 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 shoot me a text. You You just shoot me a text. I'll see you the link. A couple weeks, you know. Gotcha. Oh man. Uh Technically Athletic Part Two is currently out on audio and YouTube. So check out this part two where I interview the man of the legend, light skin assassin himself, Jalen. <laughs> and uh be on the lookout for new episodes and check out Dare to Talk, man. Yeah. Is that all we got, bro? I think that's all we got. Shoot, we good. Man. Hey. This is an episode. See stay you next blessed. week, KC. See stay you next blessed, week. Stay black. <laughs> Stay blessed, stay black, y'all. Peace. (laughs)